Hi again guys and welcome to another retro review from way back in the day on Forza Motorsport 2 and this is another one of my personal favourite unicorn cars from the game. Not a unicorn within the game but a unicorn now when we're looking back and that is the Lingenfelter Corvette. Now this is an aftermarket tuned version of the Corvette in a similar way to what you might expect from something like Hennessy for instance and just like Hennessy this is fast real fast, and it makes a decent enough rival for the Hennessy Viper, which we will also feature in this series down the line. Now this is a reasonably expensive car, 241 grand if you do choose to buy it of course, which makes it almost among the most expensive in the game, because the most expensive cars on Forza 2 are 250 grand. So it's a little bit off that, 9,000 credits, but pretty close. Now the engine on this one is very heavily modified, Plus, it's already a lot bigger than you'd normally expect in a C5 Corvette. Because, of course, if you think back, even the top-of-the-line Z06 Corvettes of the C5 generation still only had 5.7 litres. This one is the Lingenfelter 427. So, as is indicated by the name, you're looking at a 7-litre V8 instead of a 5.7. Now, one of the advantages of an engine like that is that you can quite easily put out big amounts of power and torque, not just more power and torque, because, of course, you could tune the smaller engine to do that as well, but with a bigger engine, you can more often than not do it easier. For instance, you don't have to tune the engine as hard. The engine can produce that power and torque in what you could say is a more lazy way, almost like the engine is underperforming, but still putting out great numbers. Now this is putting out really impressive numbers. 725 horsepower before you've even done anything to it, and an even more impressive 729 pound-feet of torque. That's massive power and torque. Now, of course, being a Corvette, it's more than capable of coping with that. It is still, of course, rear-wheel drive, and the weight is actually pretty good. It weighs 1,414 kilos, which isn't too much. The horsepower per ton, consequently, is almost a Veyron rivaling 513, and the class on this one is actually quite reasonable. It's not as high as you might expect, given how massive the numbers are. It is S-class, but it's 911, so you can do a lot to this without actually taking it up to, say, the ultimate class level. So overall, at least on paper, this looks like a pretty good deal. Plus, visually, it's kind of understated. From the front end, you can, of course, tell that it's not a normal Corvette, but to the untrained eye, from the side or from the back, which is generally the view they're going to get from it, it doesn't really look that radically different. It certainly doesn't stand out like something like a Gold Strand Corvette, for instance, or a Hennessy Viper. So this car potentially could have quite a bit of use. Now, of course, not online anymore, speaking retro style, because you can't even go on the online servers anymore. But this car back then did have that kind of use. Because A, it wasn't a vehicle which a ton of people used anyway, because it was quite easy to overlook in the dealership. A lot of people don't look for aftermarket Corvettes, that's just not really something that people would assume is on the game. Even though there's actually a pretty good selection of them, as well as aftermarket versions of other sports cars and exotics as well, like the AB Flug Supra, the Veilside Supra, this one, the Goldstrand Corvette as well, the Hennessy Viper, there's a very strong selection of not just aftermarket JDM cars, which is of course what you'd expect to be on the game, but also these aftermarket exotics and sports cars and muscle cars, which is pretty cool. It's nice to have a selection like that, and many of these cars, this one included, were never featured since. That's kind of the point of this series, of course. Now, one of the reasons why I would love to see this one return is because for a Corvette with so much power and so much speed, and it is a very quick car, it's actually not that difficult to drive. You can quite easily, as you can see a few times in this video, get the tail out, of course, it's completely stock, this version that I'm driving, but if you think of it that way, that's actually pretty good. For a Corvette with rear-wheel drive, over 700 horsepower and well over 700 foot-pounds of torque, to handle as well as this one does, that's actually quite impressive. Now, if it had all-wheel drive, for instance, or a big wing, giving it a lot of downforce, then you'd understand it, but it doesn't. This is a very slick, 
smooth, very straight line looking machine. The visuals are certainly very streamliner style, like a speed record car, but it doesn't handle like that. It handles very well. And to be honest, most of the time when you do get that wheel spin, it tends to be exiting corners. So it's quite easy to control. You just give it a little bit less throttle, and it pretty much takes care of itself. Then when you're above, say, 100 or 120 miles per hour, give it the full beans. And there aren't really that many other cars that can genuinely keep up with this thing. There are some, of course, a GT40 when modified or a Hennessy Viper, as I mentioned earlier. But apart from those, maybe the Veilside Supra, there aren't that many. Even race cars would struggle to keep up with this thing for top end speed. Some prototypes can match it, but even then, they'd have to be modified with lower downforce, longer gearing, and maybe even de-restricted engines to be able to do so. So, as far as straight line speed goes, this car pretty obviously has it down. It really does. But the biggest thing about this car that I really like is just the feeling of exclusivity which it has. Because Lingenfelter isn't a company which a lot of people think of in games. In fact, I'm not sure if any other game features this Corvette. And that alone makes it feel all the more special. It's not just a really powerful Corvette, because of course you could tune a Corvette yourself to be that kind of power. It's more than that. It's something special, it's something rare, and it just has that feel... Well, for instance, Roof does for Porsche, that special, bespoke, almost boutique feel that the standard car doesn't have. So I would personally love to see the Lingenfelter return to the world of Forza. I think there's a pretty slim chance that it would. I think, to be honest, if it were to return, it would have been on Forza 3 or 4. Now, I think it's far less likely. It could come back to a Horizon game, I would say more likely than to the motorsport games. But even then, I don't think there's that much of a chance. So it's certainly worth looking at if you do plan to go back and play Forza 2. And that's it for this particular pick. So, of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.